Good morning, everyone. This is Tim Marlowe with Be The Better Local. We're coming to you live here on Tuesday, July 28th, and it's our last Tuesday of the month. And we have Holy our... Holy moly, it is. <laughs> like, already. Uh, we have our great friend, Andy Vargo, here on the mic. Say hello. Hey, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Um, and today we're bringing you a special guest um, uh, from Pierce Transit, Miss Penny. She is the uh, community development uh, administrator over there. And we have a special guest, I mean, a special topic to talk about because um, you're expanding your services. And so we're excited to talk about this new system called the Runner System. So um, say hello to everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Penny from Pierce Transit. Glad to be here today. Yeah. So uh, so let's go ahead and just get to know what this new system is, because uh, if you don't know who Peer, uh, Pierce Transit is, the, they're the big buses that are just about everywhere in our Pierce County area. Um, they have a, an additional medical service bus as well, and so uh, I'm sure that I'm missing more services. But, you know, Penny and I have gone back uh, the last handful of years uh, on all the different events and just community outreach. So... When I saw this new system, we had to just bring you on board and just learn more about it. So we're excited. Yes, thank you. So, um, yeah, Pierce Transit runs the local fixed route buses as well as the shuttle, which is the special medic medical paratransit service. And we also have a whole fleet of van pools as well for commuters. Um, obviously, right now, um, things are not as busy as they once were. But this is a great time for us to test out new ways of offering service that are maybe different than traditional transit, but help people get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. And Runner is a good example of that. Um, it's what's known as a micro transit service. Mm -hmm. And that means that in this case, it's on demand. So it doesn't have a route or any particular time that it's stopping somewhere. But basically, it's used by folks to make that first and last mile connection to or from the fixed route transit in an area where we don't have bus service. Mm -hmm. That sounds like such an important need because a lot of times when you go to figure out where you want to go and you're figuring out your bus route, it is that last mile mm -hmm. that is tricky. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's often why we hear when we do surveys that people tend not to use the buses because they either have a really long walk to get there or they're not able to make the journey because there aren't good sidewalks or it's dangerous fast traffic along the route they have to travel. So this is a way for folks in a specific area to make that connection in a fairly seamless way. Mm -hmm. Now has Pierce Transit done this type of system before? Yeah, we've actually um, had a, a pilot project in 2018 and 19 that actually Tim and I worked together on promoting and that was a grant we received from the federal government to work with Lyft. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we provided free Lyft rides to folks in different parts of our service area so that they could do the exact same thing that Runner's going to do, which is make that first and last mile connection. Mm. And, um, and that was, at least from my experience in learning more about um, your involvement with that, uh, that pilot program with Lyft, it was pretty successful in my eyes. Yeah, I think so. It it, was, it didn't have as many trips as, say, a similar service might in a larger urban area like Seattle. I know there's another successful similar program down in Florida. Um, but for our area and the uh, geography covered and our ridership levels, it actually did really well. And as time went on, it was like um, a year and seven-month program. The numbers just kept rising as more and more people saw how valuable it was. Yeah, and uh, it seemed like every time that I got in front of a new um, client with Lyft or anything like that, um, they didn't even know about it. So I was excited to introduce it to them. So everything that, as the time goes on, more people get comfortable with the, the system itself. And so I can only see the runner system just being very, very successful um, as more people get to know um, that it's here. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So how does this on-demand service work? I mean, obviously, we're not pulling up the, you know, the rideshare apps anymore. So how are we going to get this on-demand service with you guys? So this um, service is we're, we're contracting with a provider called MedStar. They're out of Yakima and um, kind of a homegrown company. They uh, d have done a lot of medical specialized transportation. So they have really great customer service. They're very accessible in all that they do. And what MedStar is doing for us is providing the vehicles and the drivers. Mm. And they also have their own app that is used mm. called Goin, G-O-I-N. And so what folks will do is they'll download the Goin app. And very much like an Uber or a Lyft, 
you will summon a ride when you need one. And we've defined a very specific zone in which this service will occur because we don't want to um, step on any of our regular bus routes. Rather, we want this to be in an area where there is no bus mm -hmm. right now. And that happens to be a swath of the Ruston Way corridor. Mm -hmm. um, if people don't have the wherewithal to use an app, they can call a special designated phone number, which is on the web page, and a customer service representative will help them schedule the ride. And it's on demand, so it's not like you have to book it a day before or anything. It's just, I'm down here at the RAM, and I want to go to the Tacoma Dome station to catch a bus, and then I use my app or make the phone call, and here comes the ride. Yeah. And that, that's such a great uh, segment to capture people who might not use an app because I know I was a rideshare driver and people would use a third-party service a lot of times in order if they were a senior or someone who doesn't have a smartphone. And so that, that really enables a lot more people to use this service. Yeah, and the, that's another thing we have to consider is equity. We have to make sure it's available to all of the public just like our buses are. Mm -hmm. So we have the phone number access, and then we also have – vehicles for runner that are um, wheelchair accessible. Mm -hmm. So they're um, sm mini kind of minivan vehicles that have a ramp at the back. So folks using mobility devices can can use this service as well. Yeah, so you don't have to stress out about what car is going to show up to pick you up and am I going to have <laughs> to order another one? <laughs> yeah, or it's exactly. Just, you know it's going to work. So how does how does somebody, like, I know with an app service with the rideshare, you you know, you just get billed on your credit card for these rides. How does how does a customer pay for this when they're a passenger? So the as an introductory measure, because it's brand new and we want folks to give it a try, we're offering it free for the month of August. Oh, wow. Um, the Then 1st of September comes around. What we're going to be doing is asking people to pay a regular Pierce Transit fare. Mm -hmm. okay. um, these vehicles don't accept cash. Mm -hmm. So what we're asking people to do is to use our... Uh, Pierce Pay app, which is on the Hop Through platform. That's our standard mobile fare payment mechanism that we have at Pierce Transit. You can get a one ride, uh, all day pass, or a 30 day pass on, yeah. on the Pierce Pay app. If you already have an ORCA card, which is the regional bus mm -hmm. pass that's right. used, you can just show that card to the driver because they'll know you're a regular transit user. Mm -hmm. The same thing if you have an all day paper pass, you can show mm -hmm. that to the driver as well. So essentially, you're paying in the same methods you're paying for your transit ride, and you're not having to learn a new system or make an extra payment somewhere. It's all right in that. Yeah, yeah and part of the this being a pilot program is we're going to see as time goes on if there's a way to integrate the fare payment a little mm -hmm. bit better so it, it will eliminate even one step uh, further. But for yeah. right now, that's how we're going to use the payment. Right. But for August, free rides. Free rides, yes. Yeah. Nice. Um, so looking at the areas that you're going to be using this at, where specifically are you trying to use this pilot system maybe now and why aren't buses available in those areas? So some folks might remember a couple of years ago for two summers, we had something called the downtown to defiance trolley. This was on Friday, Saturdays and Sundays in the summer months, and it served the Ruston Way corridor and went into Point Defiance Park. Um, it was fairly popular, but the the main um, feedback we got was that people wanted to use it to get to and from work, and maybe they work during the weekdays, not just the weekend. We also saw the ridership ebb and flow um, based on time of day or which one of the three weekend days, um, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So we often had an empty bus, and that's not very efficient. Mm -hmm. The other uh, challenge is that if you've ever driven along Ruston Way, you'll see that there's railroad tracks on one side and the water on the other. And it was really difficult for us to find accessible bus stop locations down there. We only could have about three bus stop locations because of the property and kind of the geography. So with this service, we don't have to have bus stops. It's not routed. It responds when people need it. It goes where they're waiting for them, parking mm -hmm. lots, pull-ins, wherever. Um, so this will be a great way to for Pierce Transit to learn if this kind of service is something riders want to use and find valuable. And then if it is, you know, maybe we could look at it as a model for other areas that are hard to serve with a fixed route bus. Yeah, and I think that's such a great point to emphasize that it's not like the bus service in that you have to get to a stop and that's where you call. There's not specific places that you have to land in order to have them find you, that you tell them where you are. And yeah, they'll, that's they'll right. Come to you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you recently talked uh, or briefly talked about just the accessibility of how Pierce Transit so well with, you know, applying their services across the board, no matter if you're in wheelchairs, if you're blind, if you're deaf, if you're just the, you know, at any point in your life. So um, what about the runner system? I know that some of the vehicles are assessed with those. Um, is, is that still part of the app on how you order it and, and exactly what kind of vehicle you need? Yeah, um, we're starting out with, with a couple of dedicated vehicles that are both um, wheelchair accessible. Um, because they're accessible in that way, they can also take two bikes. So a lot of people go down to Reston Way on their bicycle and maybe are intimidated by the hills to get back out of <laughs> Reston Way. <laughs> right. And so they could, you know, use Runner if the space is available. Um, in the app, uh, users will note that there is a comment field, and you can put in there um, anything such as I have a mobility device, I use a walker, I have a stroller, or I'm the guy in the red jacket in case you're <laughs> in an area where, you know, it's hard to see who's who. Um, so that's the way that you would customize your trip request. Nice. Nice. If they're out there busy with other customers, they would just give you an approximate wait time until that accessible vehicle that is empty will come and get you. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Now, one thing that, you know, obviously <laughs> we're in the middle of COVID-19 right now, and that's been going on for a while. It's something you've obviously addressed on the transportation side just leading up to this. How, what is Pierce Transit doing to, to keep riders safe in this time? Um, Pierce Transit as a whole has taken quite a few safety measures. Um, we have had, since the beginning of the stay-at-home order, um, we kind of decreased service for the first couple of months and then brought it back up again, looking for um, folks needing essential rides. Of course, at first, now it's it's back open to everyone. Um, we ask that everybody um, on board the bus has a mask and they wear it um, for the duration of the trip. That keeps our operators safe as well as everyone who's riding. We have a cleaning protocol we've instituted so that every transit center has a crew that jumps on board the coaches as they come in during the day every couple of hours and does a, a sanitizing spray throughout the bus and wipes things down. We also socially distance the seating on the buses so that the coaches now have a maximum number of people that can get on board and the seats are marked off if you, if you can't sit in those seats so that you can maintain six foot distance. Um, if a coach is full, it will say so on the outside header board when it approaches a bus stop. The driver will call dispatch and will say, we need another coach on this run because we're full. So um, those are the things that we're doing um, to make sure that buses can keep rolling and people can get where they need to go. So they're not just going to pass you by, sorry, we're full. <laughs> they're, they're sending a message through, so help is on the way if, yeah. you're, if you're waiting for your ride. Yeah, and the runner is following suit because it is part of Pierce Transit now mm -hmm. once it launches. Um, they, are, they have a same kind of cleaning protocol with their vehicles. Of course, it's a smaller vehicle, so we're not sharing rides right okay. now. Um, originally, the plan was to be efficient and share rides if people were going in the same direction. But because of COVID, we're just doing a one-party ride all the mm -hmm. way to your destination. Um, we'll see if that changes in future. Yeah, I think it will. I mean, you know, as I don't know what the new normal would look like. I hate saying it, but I mean, we're living it at this point. But um, yeah, I can I can see. Well, well, the first thing that popped in my mind was if you're already having buses get to the capacity, even at your limited ridership right now, that's good. That means mm -hmm. that, you know, society is kind of getting back into their, you know, their jobs and, 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 and their normal daily routines. And so that's, uh, I see hope for all that. Yeah. I see hope when, when a, a bus can't pick up the next rider because you're full of people. And so, um, so it's exciting to hear that. Uh, it's exciting to hear that, um, with, this, with the new runner system that it can be a shared ride one day, but you're still doing everything you can right now to deal with COVID-19 and keeping our, our riders and the drivers safe at, as well. Um, before we head out, Penny, um, what are some contact information or uh, what can we leave our audience with? Um, the app to download again, I believe I wrote it down, uh, Going, Going. Uh, Going app, and it's by MedStar. So uh, just kind of give us a little wrap-up of how they can download the app, where they can get the free rides from, and just kind of sum it up for us. Okay. Um, the app's available in the usual places, the Play Store, um, and then for either Android or iPhones. Um, 
if you go to piercetransit.org slash runner, mm -hmm. you will find uh, all of this information summarized as well as an interactive map. Now, this was a tool that was very helpful when we did our lift program. You can basically preview the ride you want to take and see if you are in the zone, as we say, to get that ride through Runner. So you can type in any address, any destination, and find out if you can make that connection. Um, we're emphasizing connecting to and from transit. So the main points of focus for transit riders will be Tacoma Dome Station and also down at the Commerce Street Transit Center. From those two places, you can go with Runner into the zone of Ruston Way, but you can also travel from point to point within the Ruston Way zone as well. So that web page is the best place to go for information. We're having um, social media posts all of this week and into next week too, so information will be coming out in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we'll be sharing it as well. As soon as we get done with this interview, uh, we'll definitely be uh, making it look pretty and getting it out and making sure that I want to take a the, ride now. Right, <laughs> I want to take a ride. I want to download the app and, and see what it's all about. And uh, when is all this starting again? So it launches on August the 1st, okay. which is this coming Saturday. Um, the service runs seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., so that's a really um, broad span of service, which will be great if you happen to work at a restaurant, let's say, mm -hmm. down on the waterfront, or if you're someone who has to get up to Seattle and you live down in the zone near Ruston Way, you can take Runner to Tacoma Dome Station and get up to Seattle that way. Yeah. Wow. That's um, yeah, that is, uh, that's amazing. I can't wait to see it all in action and uh, see what's to come with it all. So uh, check it out, the runner system coming here in just a few days, August 1st. Go to the, um, there's a scrolling right text at the bottom, and so there's going to be a website that has been going across the screen. So uh, go check out the website um, at piercetransit.org um, slash runner. Uh, is there anything else you want to say before we head out? I, I'm excited. I, I just, I, we have such a beautiful city, and this is such an exciting way to actually access more of it. And Rustin Way is one of the, the most popular and beautiful spots of our city. And so this just makes it so much easier for everybody to get there. While supporting the local transit excited. company. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, well, thank you so much, Penny, for coming on board with us today. Uh, and until next time, be the change needed in the world today. We'll see you. Thank you.